In this video, I'm showing you the best free graphics design software. If you're new to the channel and you find this guide useful, please go down below and consider subscribing to the channel. And once you've done that, please go down below and consider leaving a like as it helps get this video to more people. And please do watch this guide right until the end as I'm showing you exactly what the free graphic design software is and then exactly how to use it. So without any further ado, let's go and jump into this. As you can see, I'm now on my desktop and let's go and continue with this guide. So just a quick note, this applies to Windows and Mac. And now another quick thing is that this sort of free graphic design software we're using is online based. So do keep watching once I show you the website as I'm showing you sort of a full rundown of how to use it. I mean, I'll try and make it quite quick. Um, but anyways, I would recommend watching the full video so you know everything about this software. So the first thing you want to do is jump into a web browser. So I personally use Google Chrome, so here we go. And I'm now on Google, and all you want to do is simply search for something called Photopea. So P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A, just like so. I'll zoom in on that so it's nice and clear. And then all you want to do is come to this P online photo editor. In my opinion, this is literally like Photoshop, guys. It looks really similar if you've used Photoshop before. So the first thing you want to do is go to the top left where it says File. Simply click File and go and click on New. And then here we go. We can now go and choose the size of our project. So if you're doing something like a YouTube thumbnail, you want the width to be either 1280 by 720, which already is, or 1920 by 1080. But I'm going to keep it as um, 720p, so that's completely fine. And you can name this. So I can just name this example, just like so, and then go and click on Create. Just give you a quick rundown of all of these tools down here as well. So the top one is just a normal mouse. Then we've got a few select tools like the Magic Wand tool. We've got the Crop and Resize, the Eyedropper. And then the next main one is the paintbrush. We've got the rubber and you've got a gradient tool. Then we've got the text tool. And of course, all of these others do have really useful purposes. But I just want to give you a quick sort of basic rundown. So let's go and start with this. So I recommend going and maybe adding a new background. So if you come to the bottom right, you can go and click here. And this is a new layer. So basically, it means we can hide this layer if we dislike it or something like that. So always create new layers if you're sort of trying something new. So let's go and create a cool background. So all you want to do is grab the select tool, so the rectangle select, and simply just drag like this. And as you can see, we've now got these dots. So then all you want to do to fill this in is you could go and grab on the paintbrush and let's go and select the color. So let's just go and make this a light blue, sort of like that. And then we can go and fill this in like so. Of course, it's quite small, so let's go and make this a bit bigger. Uh, so I'll just make this size max, just like this. Perfect, we've now got a cool background. And then let's go and click back on the mouse tool. And to go and get rid of sort of the dotted lines, just do Control and D, and it's gonna go and unselect it all. So now let's go and add some text. So simply go and grab the text tool, of course, just like this. And then you can click anywhere and we can begin typing. And you can go and change the font in the top left, just like this. So I'm gonna go and do something quite bold, I reckon. I'm gonna go for this font here, but of course you can do anything you like. And then I'm gonna make the size a bit bigger, just like this. And then select on here again, and we can go and type in what we'd like. So I'm gonna type in example, just like so. And then you need to go and click on the tick mark, just like that. And then to go and change the size of this, you want to go and click on transform controls like that. And then holding shift, you want to simply drag it. Holding shift basically means it keeps it in its current aspect ratio. If you don't hold, it will do stuff like that and it'll just look bad. So then if you don't like that, just do the undo like that and boom. Then you can go and turn off transform controls and there we go. So now we've got some text, we can go and put it in the middle. You can use these sort of aligning tools like this to make it sure it's in the middle like that. So I thought I'd just go and change the font and to do that, you simply grab the, t the text tool, then click on it and double click so it's highlighted and then you can go and change it to any font you would like, just like so I could click here and boom, it's then gonna go and change it to that. So honestly guys, it's that simple to go and use the text tool. So once you've got an added text, you can also go and add other images on top of this one. To do that, all you need to do is click on file and then go and click open or open in place. I recommend open in place and then it's gonna go and put that image into this one as well. And you can go and start building up cool images. The next thing I want to show you is the effects you can go and add to either text or just other layers in your project. To do that, simply come over to your layer list, right click and go and click on blending options. And then as you can see, we've got something called layer style. So let's put this over here so we can just go and see what's happening with the text. So you can go and add stuff like drop shadow. So click here and it's gonna add a cool shadow. So you can turn distance off, then it sort of makes a cool background. You can increase your opacity as well. And you can also go and add gradient. So click here 
and then you can go and click on gradients and it's going to be some default ones as well um, so if you go and click on this downwards arrow you can then go and choose like a corner like the orange or you can choose any of these including rainbow as well and that's that really cool guys and you can do this at any layer so if i go and say uh, draw something so i'll create a new layer and draw something so i'm just going to go and draw a random shape just like so and then all i'm going to do is show you can go and work with this as well so then right click on this layer and then we can go and add a drop shadow if we wanted to and we can go and add gradient overlay so it's honestly that easy to do that to any layer you would like and then this rubber is the brush so you can simply go and rub something out just like that as you can see you can go and rub anything out and then of course once you're happy with your image then all you need to do is come to the top where it says file and if you want to go and ever sort of reopen it or use it again i'd recommend saving it as a psd you can also use this fo this file inside of photoshop if you ever get it in the future but it also means you can open this back up if you want to continue to make edits because if you save it as a photo file like a PNG or a JPEG, you wouldn't be able to go and change the font and stuff like that. So I always recommend um, saving the PSD as well if you ever think you're going to want to use it again. So then if you actually want to go and export it and use it as an image, all you need to do is click file, then come down to export as, and you've got all of these different file types. PNG and JPEG are sort of the main types you'd probably use. So you simply go and click on PNG, for example, and it's going to go and show you what it's going to look like, and you can choose the quality. So if you're happy with it being 50%, then of course you could do that. I'm going to do it 100% just for this tutorial, and go and click Save, and boom, it's going to go and drop the PNG file down here. And if I go and open it up like this, that is our file which we created in Photopea. So guys, that's literally this guide of a free graphics design software. I think it's a really good one. If you find it useful, please go down below and leave a like for more. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.